All right, guys, week two, Nat Sherman Cigars are smoking the Timeless Panamericana Bellicoso. We're pairing that with the first release of the Belvini Stories. Stay tuned. <laughs> Tino Sunday Cigar Review. I'm Mike. And I'm Mark. And uh, we're week two in Nat Sherman Cigars. We're smoking these uh, timeless Panamericana Belcosos. Uh, a lot of history behind the cigar. It's kind of fun. Uh, we're going to be pairing this this week with this Belvini Stories number one. This is something cool we're going get, to get, get into that Belvini decided to do, doing something that no Scot Scottish distillery has ever done before. Um, it's a three-part story. It's going to be really unique. Um, before we get in, get into that, Mike's going to tell us exactly what these things are made of. All right, everyone, we're back. Week two with Nat Sherman Cigars. This time we're going with the uh, original 2014 TAA exclusive that became a nationwide distribution cigar uh, last year in 2018, the Panamericana Timeless Bellicoso. Uh, beautiful cigar. We're going to get into all that, but Mike's going to tell us exactly what this thing's made of. Yeah, kind of interested and excited today that it has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Nicaraguan and Costa Rican fillers, and I really want to get into that part, yeah. and then Nicaraguan binder. Yeah, um, we're gonna we're actually both really excited about this cigar. There's a lot of cool things to talk about this thing, even before it was lit, just coming out of the box. So we're going to get cut into these things, and we'll see you shortly. All right, so smoking into these uh, timeless Panamericanas, this, this is... It, it, of course, we're going to get into a cigar like we always do, but a little history on the cigar. So this particular blend in the cigar itself in 2014 was a TAA-only release. Um, an organization inside the cigar world, we can talk about that later. But last year, in 2018, Nat Sherman decided that they would make this a statewide release. I'm sorry, nationwide release, and they let them out to the public. Uh, we brought these in for a unique event we did here with Nat Sherman, and they've just been blown away since. So, Mike, so far, what are you getting off the cigar, man? I'm really enjoying it. it yeah, we were talking about this kind of like off off the air. It's supposed to be a full-bodied cigar. Mm -hmm. I, I can see it being medium to full, I guess, but for me, it's more medium. I, I enjoy it. It's very smooth. You had mentioned also off, off camera. It has kind of a sweet undertone to it. Yeah. I pick that up as well. Uh, pretty even keel throughout. I, you don't get that typical burn with Nicaraguan... Uh, Cigars, so right. uh, although it has some Nicaraguan uh, binder in it, right? Yes, yeah, fillers, fillers, yeah, yeah. fillers too. Uh, I guess the sum I, that's kind of what I want to ask you is, what are you getting out of? I, I think the Sumatra end puts a nice twist or blend into this. Cigar. Yeah, well, I was just getting ready to say. I mean, like the for being an Ecuador Sumatran wrapper, it's actually a very smooth wrapper. Typically, you know, anytime we do anything Ecuadorian, um, with the exception of Connecticut's. And even some Sumatra wrappers are they're toothy. You know, they kind of they're 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 veiny and bumpy and mm -hmm. you know not as rough as a San Andreas, but they're you know this is very smooth. Step you know tier three versus tier one. You know you know kind of thing like that. Um, what is unique about it? You don't find Costa Rican tobacco in a lot of cigars. It is in some, of course. You can't say that it's not. But in the particular blend. It, some of those natural flavors that are things that you, those tones that you would taste a lot of times, like you said with Nicaraguan tobacco, you know, especially you get a lot of spice, um, you get a lot of that, you know, everyone uses that term earthy, you know, there's always some kind of peanut or, mm -hmm. or, or um, you know, the hay variety, there's something that reminds you of, of something grown from the ground that's in there, you know, it's just a lot different. And, uh, but I feel like that Costa Rican tobacco being inside that filler with the Nicaraguan and with the way it combusts all together with the Nicaraguan tobacco, it brings in that smooth kind of sweet thing it's got going on, but it muffs out that pepper. So it, it it's unique that they classify it as a full body, full strength cigar because it's body wise, I think it you could get a medium full body wise. It does have, there are flavors in there, but strength wise, this is nowhere near, I mean, this is a, a morning smoke on an empty stomach for me. I mean, it's yeah, not, there's yeah, nothing. It, it's even nowhere near pretty light for me too. Yeah. So I mean, it, they're burning great. 
you know, is there anything significant that you're picking up? Is there something that's reminding you, something sticking out of it that, that, that's going to, you know, kind of set a tone for it? At all? I mean, for me, and I don't, you know, I don't know how to explain this. It's really, when I say quality, I mean, you can just, to me, it's just, it's constructed well. You, you mentioned not a lot of veins. Um, I, I just enjoy it's creamy, it's silky. Uh, one specific thing I pick up, I think it's that subtle sweetness because I don't want anyone to get the impression that it's like a, a flavored cigar. Of right, any, no, any not at all. No. It just has, has a subtle. <coughs> you know, we, we use the term molasses a lot. Yeah. It's, it's the best. I think it's the best way to to to, to put a distance between sugar and sweetness. You know, no, it's got a. It is. It's in there. It's unique. It's got a, like you said, the, the smoke on it. It's got that that kind of serenade you incense kind of smoke. It just rises off the cigar, floats around, and the cigar itself smells good. Yeah. So as I said, I think the, the cigar burns great. You know, we we talked about that that incense kind of creamy as well off that thing. So let's let's get into the pairing. All right. So we've got here the Belvini stories. Um, Mike and I got wind of this for, uh, probably about two months ago through some, some you know, channels that we have. And what the Belvini did is they did something that a, a Scotch distillery has never done before. They are taking a 12-year, a 14-year, and a 26-year and doing a story of American bourbon and whiskeys. So story number one is the 12-year Belvini in American oak cast, and that's what we're pairing with today. The story number two is a 14 year, and it's either the Kentucky bourbon barrels or the Tennessee whiskey barrels. Not exactly sure which way, it's one of those. Then the third year, which is gonna be the highly allocated, very hard to find, sought after bottle. But is it's the, always here at Santino. It's always here at Santino. The 26 year Belvini, is going to be finished off in some sort of American barrel, and that will be the third and final story that comes out. So it's a very unique thing. Um, you can you can do all the research and studying that you want. Scotch distilleries have always used sherry casks. They've always done things like that. It may have been an ex sherry cask that was used at some point in the states, but it's never been done with an American barrel, fresh barrel, not reused, not done. If they came here, they used a barrel that was used for. Or intended to be used for another tort, this type of spirit made here in the states. So, there's that story. That story's good. So now we're pairing that with this. Mike, give it a taste. Smoke the cigar. Do the thing. What do you got? Absolutely, I do have something. First of all, I don't know if the camera can pick up behind uh, Mark's head. Is I think we might be the only place in, in the area in Missouri that's part of the Balvini Glenfiddich Century Club so part of the reason we get all these things is we support Balvini and Glenfiddich uh, pretty well in this area so uh, I, it, what's interesting that I get on this and Mark you know, we, we've mentioned this many times to the audience especially when I'm tasting alcohol <laughs> uh, the one thing that you know I've always said I, I don't <coughs> usually prefer the heat and the spice and the burn. Right. Associated with a lot of bourbons and scotches. What's interesting, I picked up on the very subtle sweetness of a cigar. And what I get with, with the Balvini, uh, the first story here, the 12 year, is it is, to me, very sweet with a light burn at the end, minus any spice or pepper so I actually enjoy it, and I think it blends really well with the right. cigar. I don't know if you can get a better pairing. I, I, I'm not going to disagree. When it comes, what surprised me the first time I drank the story number one is the, to me, the only reason I know it's a scotch is because of the smell on the nose. It smells like a scotch. It does not taste like a scotch. It tastes more like a bourbon. All. It tastes more like a a longer aged bourbon that hasn't been cut and doesn't have that heat profile to it that real that sharp attack with the heat to it mm -hmm. and it does that slight sweetness whatever it may be that we're picking up in the cigar it 
it sort of cools the palate down when you're drinking the scotch, and it, it does this thing. I mean, it, it marries really well together. I don't want to say a bunch of dumb words that I, I, I'm like making up about how it tastes. It. It, I don't, th- no, I don't th- think this is one of those cases job, where, the, where, the, yeah, where the cigar and the, and, and, the, and the pairing is perfect. Yeah, I don't think there's... You don't have to reach for anything. No, there's uh, nothing at all. It, it opens up you know, the, the, the silkiness of the smoke, the way it grabs your palate and just sits around on the inside, and then you drink or you drink and then you take the smoke in. It marries the flavors together so well that it just gives off a... There, there's no subtle indifference. It just it, it works. I think we forgot to mention what would, is the price point of this cigar. Um, so um, MSRP National is between uh, across the sizes. If we're just doing the Bellicoso, it's between twelve fifteen and fourteen twenty five. At Santino's, we sell them at thirteen twenty. Okay. Um, yeah. Across across the variety of sizes. I mean, the Pan Americana comes in four three sizes. Sizes. And a Three little, a little quick characteristic of this cigar that we didn't mention was the widow's peak. Mm-hmm. I really like that. Mm-hmm. I, I do. I, I'm sure there's mixed feelings about yeah. that. It just looks really. So neat. I want to. I want to clarify this now. If anyone ever tries to steal that, I coined that term widow peak. That's what I call it. What I call that is a very fine point bellicoso, where the tobacco comes to an almost needle type point. I call it a widow's peak. Like you said, I really like that. I think it gives you a variety of cutting options as far down on it as you want to go but it also doesn't choke up on the shoulder that some torpedoes do or sometimes when you get a bellicosa that, that stops with a short round off it chokes up on the shoulder and if you cut it too low it kind of takes away the whole effect of the bellicosa you know it, it's supposed to give you the option to cut a little more or a little less um, beautiful is do you, do you know what the price point is on the baldini of you know, I know they're all allocated, but have you so, priced that as yeah, yet? Yeah, the, the price point at Santino's, it's uh, $13 a pour. Uh, for, for it being a 12-year, especially a Belvini, um, something with a little more statue behind it, it's, and, you know, at the ounce and a half pour, uh, it's very, very affordable pour, very, something very, very good to taste. Um, as far as the bottle goes, I personally have not seen or heard of the bottle on a shelf. I, I don't know yet. I don't know when that will happen. I don't know. Other than uh, other, other than here, other than here, right. um, as far as retail and things like that, I don't, right. I don't really know if it's going to. Who knows? Well, let's, I'm excited. Let's let's get ready to jump right into the uh, try, buy, or deny. I'm right. ready. Let's go nuts. Go for it. All right, that much anticipated part of our show: try, buy, or deny. Mm. Mark, you want to lead us off? I do. Buy it. <laughs> Very buy simple. It. Buy it. I'm not even gonna tell you why. No, I'll tell you why. Um, the cigar itself, since this since the cigar came in, it's been if, if I'm smoking that Sherman, it's kind of what I smoke. I go through the different sizes. I really enjoy the cigar. It I don't think it's fair to call it in all the ratings complex complex and cool. I do see that there is a broad amount of flavor to it, but I don't agree with the complexity listing. I don't I don't like that word for it. It is a beautiful cigar. The cigar's got unique sweetness to it, some sort of thick, silky tone. Again, I'm not going to put a, a word to it, but it, it, I mean, it's, it's smoking am- amazing, right? It, it's comfortable in your hand. It looks beautiful. Um, it's not hard to draw through. You know, the thick, silky smoke, like Mike said, the silkiness was a perfect word for that. It, it covers the palate and it lets off almost like it, like when you light an incense, you know how the smoke dances around, something like that. The Belvini, get in here, get the pour. If you're not in Missouri and you find it somewhere, grab, get the bottle, try the pour, experience the stories. Especially this pairing, I don't see any reason why this would not work for anyone. Mike's not a Scotch drinker, and he's loving the pairing. So, hands down, it's a buy across the board. Uh, I got nothing else for it. All right, very simple for me. It's it's buy a box, and here's why. This is what I wanted to say earlier. This is one of those unique cigars for me. We talk a lot about uh, the time and place to smoke a certain cigar, right? We talk about that great after-dinner cigar when you've had a great dinner, or out at the beach cigar, or cutting the grass cigar, or sitting out at the pool cigar. 
I don't know for I don't know about you, but for me, this time was Pan American. I, I feel you could smoke any occasion. It could be after a really good dinner, or it could be after a barbecue, or it could be after McDonald's. I, I don't know. This cigar fits everything for me. Right. I, I, any time, I morning, night, yeah. afternoon. Yeah. It just it's easy to smoke. Um, I think you already mentioned. You know, I do enjoy some light scotch, but. This is this is a great pairing. It's a, it's another hit. You got to come in and try it while while it, it lasts. W without a doubt, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. So, any last thoughts on the cigar? The try by night. I think we're settled in and buy. Yeah, I mean this. It's just a must. The scotch, just do it's it. Exactly. Put you know, it I will I will mention one thing. I just want to throw this out to you. Yo. Perdomo does really well here. It's very popular across the country and mm -hmm. not just here. And it's a great, even keel cigar, and I think it fits a lot of. That's why a lot of people smoke it. We we recommend it. This is a similar to that, but I don't want to put comparisons that it's like a Perdomo or Perdomo's like a Nat Sherman. But you right. understand where I'm going with that? Yeah, yeah. It, it can easily be smoked in any situation, yeah, uh, you're, in you're, any you're experience talking, level. You're talking two two companies that do amazingly well, produce great product majority of the time across the board and they each create a unique setting for their cigars where if you're starting out you've got this if you've been smoking 10 years you've got this and you never have to leave the family I, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more so alright that's episode 2 right. you know how this works go down there like comment and subscribe if you're 18 years or older and local to the state of Missouri leave your comment if your comment gets the most likes, you come in, I'm going to hand you this cigar. Nothing attached. You come in, say, here, here's me, I won, this is yours. All right? We love the questions, love the feedback. Shoot it in. All right. All right. It seems like congratulations are in order. Let's give uh, a big shout-out to the Blues and their new coach for winning the Stanley Cup and bringing it to St. Louis for the first time. Let's go, Blues. <laughs>